Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we are taking a look at AP Chemistry Unit 6, Section 5, which is all about how heat changes during phase changes. So here I have a graph, and this is a very common uh, graph that perhaps you've seen before, or this pops up on the AP Chemistry exam. I've even seen this on ACTs as well. This is something called a heating curve. Now essentially what we have here is we have the addition of heat on the x-axis, and the temperature on the y-axis. So we can see how a substance is going to respond as we add heat to it. Now notice that if you have a solid, we add heat and it gets warmer. The temperature goes up, which, surprise, surprise, that's probably not uh, any surprise at all, at all. You would have expected that to happen. But notice that you keep adding heat and then there's a point at which you add heat, but the temperature doesn't go up. And what's happening here? Well, this is the process called melting. And so this is the melting point. So when you have a substance at the melting point, you add heat, but the temperature doesn't go up. It stays constant over the melting process. Now, once you get all of the substance melted, then it's, it's completely a liquid. And when you add heat, once again, the temperature starts to rise, as you can he see here. In fact, it rises more quickly than it did when it was a solid, to be honest. So we have that, and then it just keeps rising and rising, and then you keep adding heat, and all of a sudden it stops the temperature from rising again. What's happening? Well, this is the boiling point. And once you get that liquid to the boiling point, you add heat, but instead of the temperature going up, it causes the liquid to boil. And so it's vaporizing. So you get all of the liquid uh, boiled, and once it's all boiled away into a gas, then when you start adding heat again, now the temperature starts going up again, and it's, it's all a gas. In fact, it goes up even faster than when it was a solid or a liquid. Now notice that the heat associated with melting is called the heat of fusion. That means how much heat, how much thermal energy it requires to melt one gram of a substance. Heat of vaporization is how much heat it requires to boil one gram of that liquid. So let's take a look at a couple questions here. Which states of matter exist during the melting process? If you've, if you've ever observed a melting ice cube, I think you know the answer, right? Both solid and liquid. During the melting process, both of those states can exist at the same time. Now, does the temperature of a substance change as it boils? Well, according to this cooling, or to this heating curve rather, the answer is no, it does not. Now, we can take this, this heating curve and flip it in reverse, basically, and start out as a gas here, and then we actually have everything going downhill. That would be called a cooling curve. And you'd notice that the graph looks pretty much the same, except it would be the mirror image of this. We'd have, you know, during the, this time it would be the condensation process, temperature doesn't change. During the freezing process, temperature doesn't change. Let's take a look at this concept of heat of fusion, heat of vaporization for a moment here. And we'll focus in on heat of fusion for a couple of minutes. Now, let's imagine, in fact, this is actually correct, the, the heat of fusion or the enthalpy of fusion for water is 334 joules per gram. So part A says, how much energy must be removed to freeze one gram of water? Well, this is just asking us about the definition of enthalpy of fusion or heat of fusion. This heat of fusion here tells us that in order to melt one gram of water, one gram of ice, you have to add 334 joules to that water, to that ice. So guess what? If you're going to freeze a gram of water, it's the same amount, it's just going in reverse. And so if you're going to freeze one gram of water, you have to remove that same 334 joules from the water. So that's the answer. It's, that, it's just 334 joules. 
Now part B says how much thermal energy would be required to melt a four pound block of ice with a mass of 1,814 grams. Well, this is essentially just a, a dimensional analysis problem. We start with 1,814 grams and we're trying to convert to joules because it says how much thermal energy. So in our conversion factor, we have to put grams on the bottom and joules on the top. And the numbers for this conversion factor come right out of that enthalpy of fusion. It's 334 joules per one gram. So it's gonna be like this. And when you cancel grams, you can multiply across and we have an answer of about 606,000 joules. So that's a lot of joules, isn't it? In fact, it's so many, it's probably, probably more convenient to write this in kilojoules and just say it's 606 kilojoules. So from this video, I hope you've learned how to work with heat of fusion, heat of uh, vaporization as well. If you learned something about this and about heating curves and cooling curves, go ahead and slam that thumbs up button and join me in my next video where we're going to take a look at Unit 6, Section 6. I'm Jeremy Krug. Thanks for watching.